Today we're going to be replacing this old worn out carpet and hear that? This will be the perfect time to fix these squeaky floorboards while we're at it. A good place to start taking up your carpet is in a corner. Just be careful not to damage your baseboards because you don't want to have to replace those too. This is also a good time to go ahead and evaluate your pad. A lot of times you can keep the same pad, but as you can see this one's old and lost its resiliency. So we'll be replacing this too. Go ahead and take your carpet up first and then come back and take up the pad. Helping me today is Ignacio from Carpet One. And what we're doing is we're taking this carpet up in sections because this room is about a 23 by 23. And if we tried to take it all up in one piece, it would be too heavy and unmanageable to carry down. So we're gonna take this out in about four different sections, 12 by 12. And I'm using a utility knife to cut this carpet. And it's easier if you cut it on the back side like I'm doing. The subflooring underneath the pad and the carpet is riding up and down the loose nails and that's what's causing the squeaking. So the way to fix that problem is go ahead and hammer in all the nails that you see and then drill in some inch and a quarter wood screws. I'm going to drill these into the joist and these are going to be a more permanent solution because they won't loosen like the regular nails will. You'll need to examine the tack strips around the perimeter of your room and what you're looking for is to make sure they're still in good shape and that the tack points are facing in towards the wall. Ours are still in pretty good shape so we won't be needing this new one. When putting down your pad it's not necessary to glue it or staple it to the subfloor but since you'll be cutting it to fit your room you will need to tape the seams together using some duct tape. Also you want to cut your pad to the inside of the tack strips. We had our carpet delivered and Ignacio is helping me lay the carpet out in the room. The most important part of laying down your carpet is making sure if you have more than one piece that the nap, which is the weave of the carpet, is going in the same direction as the other piece. You can do this on some carpets by feeling the texture. If you rub your hand in the same direction on both pieces and the texture feels the same, then you know you're fine. In other words, when I rub in this direction, it's smooth, and when I go back in the other direction on both pieces, it's rough. Now, on some carpets, you're not going to be able to feel the difference. So here's something that you can do. You can take a piece of paper and a pen, and you'll want to rub your pen over the top of your paper like this. And if you'll notice, the paper is moving in this direction. So that's telling me that the nap on this piece of carpet is moving in that direction. It's important that your nap is going in the same direction on all pieces of carpets so that when the light hits it, you don't see the seam and different pieces of your carpet won't be lighter and darker than the other. When you're putting two pieces of carpet together, you'll want an invisible seam. And the way to get that is to cut off at least one inch of carpet all the way down on both pieces. So to get a straight cut, if you'll take a pin and fold your carpet up just like this, you can find a groove to put your pin in. You can then work your pin all the way down the length of your carpet. Now this is a slow and tedious process, but it's very important to get a straight cut. After you've got your groove all the way down your carpet, you can take a carpet knife, put it in that groove, and then make your cut all the way down your carpet. After you get your seams cut, you need to put down some seaming tape. This is heat activated glue that's going to hold our carpet pieces together. So what you want to do is center this like I am with this middle line. That way you have the same amount of glue under both pieces of carpet. Now let me just get these in place. Before we activate that glue, what you'll want to use is this tool called a knee kick. You can rent this inexpensively, but it's well worth it. What this is going to do, it's going to tighten our seams together. You'll want to put a lot of pressure up here at the top and just kick with your knee to tighten up that seam. This is a seaming iron and you're going to need this tool to heat your glue. You can rent this for about $20 a day and the way that you use this is you place the iron directly on the seaming tape, lay your carpet pieces on either side and push this up a little bit and that is heating the glue and it's pushing your carpet together. 
After you do one small area, then you need to move up just about the length of your iron and let it sit in that same spot for about 15 seconds to heat that glue and then you can move on. Carpet layers have a lot of interesting tools to make their job easier, like this power stretcher. If you have a room that's larger than a 12 by 12, you can use the knee kick to stretch your carpet, but this power stretcher will really stretch your carpet more uniformly so that you don't have any bubbles or wrinkles. You do need to stretch the carpet before you can tack it down. So the way this tool works is you put the foot of the stretcher against one wall, and you need to make sure that that wall is really sturdy because there will be a lot of pressure. You place the head of the stretcher a foot or two from this wall and push down on this handle. And this has teeth in it just like the knee kicker. So you can see that this carpet is really stretching. We're in the last stages of installing our carpet. The power stretcher got us close, but we still need to use the knee kick to finish the stretching off. What you do is you take your hammer and you put a lot of pressure down on it so that your carpet is going into your tack points just like this. And as soon as you're through tacking down your carpet, you need to use a carpet trimmer to trim off the excess carpet. And what you'll do is you'll place this guide in between the carpet and the baseboard. And you need to make sure that you're cutting this completely straight so that you don't cut your carpet too short. I'm actually pushing up against the baseboard to keep my cut straight. I'm using this tacking tool to push this carpet down and underneath the baseboard. And I'm finished. Wouldn't you agree this looks better than that old outdated carpet that we started with? And guess what? No more squeaky floorboards.